Hi, my name's Katherine Lagner, and I'm going to be a senior at Avon High School. This summer, for my internship, I was at Avon Point Family Health Center in Pediatric Nursing. My project is titled, A Nursing Perspective of Asthma Education in the Pediatric Population. This is a diagram of asthma and why it makes, uh, why it's hard to breathe for people with asthma. Our hypothesis was that pediatric patients with asthma or asthma-related symptoms evaluated in a pediatric office require further nursing education to understand pathophysiology of symptoms, medication, management, and equipment usage. The methodology was that I developed a phone survey of eight questions to determine parents' understanding of how to care for their illness how to care for their child with asthma or asthma-related illness. I then determined a patient population for the phone survey taken from office visits with the diagnosis of wheezing, pneumonia, bronchitis, bronchiolitis, reactive airway disease, and respiratory syncytical virus during the months of May and November. After that, I conducted a phone survey of 101 patients' caregivers. I reviewed and analyzed data from the phone survey. The original purpose of the study was to determine patients' educational deficit, but after gathering information, it was found that the same information was not consistently being shared with patients regarding medical equipment from clinical staff. I then created a questionnaire for the nurses and medical assistants to find the deficit in their knowledge base regarding home res respiratory equipment. After that, I, re I revised and analyzed data on the equipment questionnaire. I created a frequently asked question sheet for the patients and their caregivers to make sure they were all getting the same information about their equipment. My data consisted of 101 pediatric patients from five different age groups with asthma or asthma-related symptoms such as wheezing, pneumonia, bronchitis, bronchiolitis, reactive airway disease, and respiratory syncytical virus. They were participants of a phone survey to find the deficit of their knowledge about their illness and treatment. Also, four clinical staff members were given a questionnaire to determine the consistency of information given to patients regarding equipment usage of nebulizers and spacers. This is my percentage of patients in each age group from my database. This is the gender percentage of patients. These are the amount of patients who came back for a second evaluation. Because most of the people did not come back for a second evaluation, we are not able to see if they fully understood their equipment and their usage of it. This is the amount of nebulizers and spacers given out to patients. This is pre and post knowledge levels from nebulizer and spacer questionnaire given to staff. Before the questionnaire, there is a large deficit in the knowledge base of how to use nebulizers and spacers. And after the questionnaire, there was 100% This is the frequently asked question sheet given out to patients to make sure the information was consistent. My conclusions were that patients believed their educational needs were met, however, the majority did not return for follow-up to evaluate their management of the disease. Patients were not all receiving the exact same information on maintenance and usage of respiratory equipment. After providing information to clinical staff, there was compliance regarding delivery of information. My recommendations are that annually, there should be an annual review of nebulizer and spacer equipment maintenance, and nurses should conduct post-office visit phone calls to review parents' understanding of symptoms and medication management related to asthma. I want to thank Avon Point nursing staff, Michelle Bronscheidel, Janet Kippel, Brenda Wagaman, and also the Office of Civic Education Initiatives, including Ms. Rosalind Strickland and Ms. Nedra Starling. Thank you for a great summer internship and opportunity.